My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq. Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. One Nation Under Foo. I am your host, the fabulous, the frisky, the fortunate, the Foo. And we are coming to you live on this lovely Monday night from Foo Bar Studios right here on KLRN Radio. And with me, as always, is the only Amish guy who wants Parallel Park to train, Ordy Packard. Ordy, how are you? You know what? That was not easy. But I did it. <laughs> but you did it. And I'll it. do it again, too. Because you're Amish. That's Stop me. Do. Wild man. Oh, look at you. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> I was totally caught off guard. I'm like, wait, is that our music? Are we going? <laughs> I, was, I don't know where I was. But I was like, oh, my God, that's our song. We're going. <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of totally checked out for a minute, and then there was the chainsaw. I was like, wait, did you hear that? That's us. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was really bad. I guess I, yeah, I, guess I was checked out. I think it's all the Advil. Could be. Yeah, lots of Advil. Yeah. But that's okay. You know, it's good. But how are you? 
I am doing very well. Uh, we are nearing the getting so much closer to recalling Gavin Newsom. I saw that. And he is, and he's really going to die on that. This is a uh, Republican Trumpist plot. I saw that. Yeah, all you extremists out there. All us extremists who, yeah, and, you know, okay. Um, so I've been following this one guy at SF Gate, and yeah, I know SF Gate, and yeah, mm-hmm. but um, uh, his name is Eric Ting, and he's doing a great job. I mean, considering that it is the SF Gate of giving a very n- honest assessment of what's going on with the uh, recall effort and Uh he's been he's been doing a really really good job and i found out today i did not know that rick grinnell's maybe throwing his hat in too for governor yes yeah i'd heard about that before because of um you know he and i are like such good friends you know but no actually i did see that if he does he is getting on the show yes i think he would totally come on the show and then we would like be so like starstruck, we would be able to talk and it'd be really embarrassing and stupid. But I think he would come on. I don't know. I was ready to have uh, McAfee on the show before he went to prison instead. <laughs> we were talking to his people. That was what was so crazy. I know. And, it was like what we were like two weeks away, and yeah, then you yeah. had we had to reschedule because you had something going on, and then um, yep, yep, and then he's in jail. Yeah, he was in jail. Well, and I think it was his wife who was doing all of the background stuff with us. And yeah, she was like, yeah. well, we need you to kind of give us an idea of what you're going to talk about and what the show does. And I'm like, oh, my God, you know, <laughs> and then he went to jail. Yeah, it was good time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh. we yeah, we were right there. That was, that was our closest to having crazy people president on the show. Yeah, there you go. My president, John <laughs> McAfee. Bad. Yeah, something like that. Would have been interesting. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so I mean, if Rick Rennell throws his hat in the ring, I definitely want him on the show. I'll, I'm going to vote for him. I will actually GOTV if he gets in the ring. You should totally vote for him. But I mean, like, there's just something really likable about him, and he's just really funny, and he's a survivor, and yeah, California could really benefit from him. So I would suggest everyone vote for him if they can. Yes, twice. Twice. <laughs> You're not a Democrat, silly. Don't say things like that. So actually, there's three people, uh, three Republicans who have already voiced their, um, if it does move into recall. We are 200,000, maybe 250,000 votes away from it being certified, and there's still 600,000 signatures, sorry, not votes, signatures, and there's still 600,000 signatures that have been, that haven't been verified yet. Nice. So, yes. Exciting. So we're there. Very exciting. I'm excited I'm, for you. I, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, I haven't been this excited since we got rid of Gray Davis. I'm even more excited because even Gray Davis wasn't this big of a disaster. Oh, but, you know, we all know about disaster. So, I mean, don't get me started on my governor. <laughs> how is Coon Man? He sucks balls. That's how he is. You know, we're actually, um, he's supposed to talk tomorrow about how we're doing in the state of Virginia. And he's going to brag about all the vaccinations that are going out. Speaking of which, I get my shot on Friday. Um, that'll be exciting. But no, he's supposed to come out tomorrow and tell us all these things he's going to start letting us do. My shot? Yeah, what? I'm sorry. You're an evil white man. That's how it works now. Oh, Don't you know okay. that? Hello. Right. Get it together. Yeah. Um, but no, he's supposed to come out tomorrow and tell us all of the things he's going to let us start doing again. I personally think he should just drop the mask mandate. And I think that would be like, you know, the end and all and be all, but he was the first to mask us. He'll probably be the last to drop it because he sucks balls. So yeah, that's how he's doing. Yeah. I can't actually even, um, apply to get a shot until summer. My age group, our age group, my age group, um, we are, we, we can't even, uh, I mean, unless we have some condition that would require it, um, like if we, anyway, um, yeah, I can't get it until mid to late summer. Weird. Yeah, we, um, there's a whole process here in Virginia, and I just signed my husband and I up, and like, you know, we don't even really have a comorbidity or anything. I mean, it's like, oh, we're overweight. And I mean, that's really it. And so we get a little email. Hey, guys, you know, you qualify. You want to come in? I'm like, whoa, shit. So I was like, oh, yeah. 
Because, you know, I'm going to turn into a werewolf or growth or tit. I was going to say, you know, let's really keep track of those, uh, <laughs> you know, those um, mutations. Though yeah. after last week, it sounds you'll be more like the type to go down into sewer pipes to fight turtles and shit. Yeah, that'll be totally me. You can totally see me going and fighting. And no, no, no. I'm going to grow like a third boob and like, you know, become really famous because of it or something. Okay. Yeah. All right. Plan. Yeah, my husband says he's gonna take all. He's gonna take all three shots so he can grow a tail. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> but you know we're doing our part, you know, and uh, it's interesting because your passport and your Krispy Kreme donut. Yeah, what, what's interesting is I'm not like nagging anybody to take the shot. Like I'm not, hey, you really should get vaccinated because I think that's a personal choice. The people giving me shit though, since I've decided to get vaccinated, it's starting to piss me off a little bit. Yeah, it. <laughs> then you're a fucking business. If you don't want a shot, don't get one. But leave people alone who are going to get it. You know, what I loved was that it took Trump to turn the left into anti-vaxxers, <laughs> and it took Biden to turn the right into anti-vaxxers. Well, and I understand perfectly well why some people aren't comfortable. They're, you know, they want more months of testing. They want, you know, we're all being testing. You know, um, I understand sure. that. I totally get it. I'm not going to give someone a hard time if they don't want to get a vaccination. What's irritating to me is how much crap people think it's okay to give me for choosing to do it. Now, I did tell people I was having it done because I feel like what we're seeing a lot is a lot of paranoia about the shot. And I thought, well, maybe if I say, hey, guys, I'm going to take it, at least it's a, it's a conversation. No, it is, you're insane. Why would you do that? You're going to die. That has literally been <laughs> my timeline since I mentioned getting the shot on Friday. So, yeah, I'm a little mm -hmm. annoyed with that. Just a little. Well, sure. And that's, you know, it, it goes with the whole mask thing. You know, it's, you know. Um, I hate that. Wear a mask, don't wear a mask. I don't give a shit. Get yeah. vaccinated. Don't get vaccinated. I don't give, don't a, give shit. a shit. I mean, <laughs> this is, I mean, this is my, I mean, I, <laughs> being the libertarian, I really, whatever you want to do with your body, that's fine with me. It's really You know, just, you want to wear so seven great. masks and, you know, asphyxiate out and go all fucking David Carradine, whatever, you know, that fly your fleet frick. I don't care. That's a bad way to go. You know, uh, but no, I just, it's one of those things where it's kind of like with the whole um, homeschooling thing and private school thing. Um, you know, I have been on this tirade now for months and months and my kids are back in school now, thank God. And actually it's going very well. There have been a few cases of, of students, but nothing impacting my children. And of course, it's like there's thousands of kids back and we've had like 30 cases total since the beginning of the year. So, you know, it's going very well. Um, but I'm still fighting for all the kids to go back because even once I'm, you know, that we're back, you know, I'm not going to give it up and walk away. And so I'm still hammering on these unions because someone needs to. And I'm still hammering on these public education systems. And what's interesting is every time you do this, every time someone homeschool. Private school. Well, that's that's not a solution. You know, and this is what irritates me is it's that not, not a solution. What we decide on the on the right far too often is, well, this institution belongs to the left. So we're going to thumb our noses at it and walk away. And we're going to do what we want to do. And that's fine. That's a choice. But giving people a hard time who want to fight to protect these schools, I don't understand that at all. And that has been an interesting side effect of all of this advocating for schools is the number of people who just say homeschool, homeschool. But, okay, fine. I could homeschool if I want to. I can bring in a tutor if I want to. But my neighbor, who is a single parent and raising three kids on her own, she can't yeah. do that. So right. if I walk away, I leave her in a shitty school. And that feels wrong to me. And maybe that is where I'm. I don't know. I'm so stubborn at this point. They've pissed me off, and now it's like war. I don't know. But I, I'm not willing to just give up, and I feel like we do that too often on the right. And I don't mean to get on my soapbox, but I guess I'm kind of on a soapbox. No, 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 because I, I totally agree with you that, I mean, a lot of times we can just concede the fight because it doesn't, you know, like in the entertainment industry, like you talk about education, I and mean, we've watched education be on a tragic downhill decline yeah. since the 80s. And when you and I were in school, it was there – I mean, we would, I don't know. I think I remember civics being a junior year level class. And then I remember when I was a senior, there was no longer civics and it was social studies. So, you know, but yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, and yes, we have watched the erosion. We've watched the experiments with education fail 100% of the time, Common Core, all of it. Yeah. So, I mean, well, maybe now is the time that we need to get the suburban mom. I well, fired. That's, 
the, the thing is, we we really should be talking about the vouchers and the money following the student and putting pressure on these schools instead of saying, oh, well, I'm going to take my kid out. Fuck you. I understand that that's a choice. And honestly, I, you know, I don't I don't have any problem with people who say I'm going to homeschool. God bless you. If you can homeschool, you have the ability and the time and the resources and you want to do it. I totally support that. But I really struggle with the idea that, well, the left owns education now, so we're just going to walk away. Or the left owns entertainment now, so we're just going to walk away. The left owns the media. We're just going to walk away. That is not acceptable to me anymore. We can't keep walking away because when we walk away is when we lose these institutions and we are fucked if we keep giving up on them. And so I, I've started pushing back on anybody and everybody telling me homeschool, private school, because that's not a solution for my neighbor. I could do it. My neighbor can't do it. And so there's something about the greater good here. Um, and that's what it reminded me of with all the shot stuff. I just like, you know what? Mind your own fucking business. <laughs> Don't take a shot or whatever. Um, but yeah, so anyway, off my soapbox. But that has been just like a constant for me um, is arguing about homeschool and private school. And well, we shouldn't have them in these terrible schools anyway. Well, we need to be involved in these terrible schools so that the kids who can't and don't have a choice aren't stuck in these terrible schools. We have a – we really should work towards that. Yeah, so. Yeah, I was thinking about it the other night. We were kind of making fun of um, the failure of Batwoman oh. as a show. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was kind of like, you know, because what the left always does is they'll come in – They'll totally flip the script on something like Batwoman or whatever. And you hoo, hoo, we broke your fucking toys, you know, and then <laughs> you watch it go into the fucking ground like a dart. Yeah. I, I think that that's rather than walking away, we need to start doing that to them with her, her broke your fucking toys, you know, <laughs> except in this case, it's media, entertainment, academia. Those are some pretty big toys, you know, is we're not yeah. just like smashing up some Legos. We're taking out some good quality steel Tonka trucks here, right. but I say we do it. It's time. And I think we've been, you know, it's going well, it's not for us. And no, this is not our fight and we can't win. We have to win. You know, it's we, we can't count on Jeff Prost, Roman McDaniel, and I had his name until I just for Kevin Sorbo to do yeah. all the heavy lifting in entertainment. We can't count on Prager University to do all the heavy lifting in no, education. No, we can't. We can't so, just keep walking away from these things. It's great that we support them. You know, hey, you, you go, but do it at home, too. It's we have to be more involved, and it's my fault. I mean, I am the first to admit that before all of this happened, I couldn't tell I, you who was on my school board because I, I wasn't have, paying attention. I, you know, and I was the one who, anytime anybody complained about school, I just go charter schools, homeschool. Seriously, seriously, homeschool, homeschool. And I, 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 I was, I met. Are you hear me echoing? Is that just I me? just turned my sound off, so you may have been for a minute. Weird. Do you hear me? Okay, I don't hear it now. Okay, whatever. Maybe I'm just losing my mind. It's the Advil. No, no, no. I realized that I was feeding out of uh, my monitors, too, and it was when I actually went to scratch my ear, I heard that you were coming through my speakers, so I bled you out. Oh, way to go. Thanks for that. Yeah. But no, um, it, bad. It, it, bad it, was, it was totally my own doing. I had no idea who was even representing my district before all of this. And this is one of those reminders because, you know, we all get really involved in national elections. Oh, we need, you know, we got to beat Biden. We got to, Trump's got to win. And we, we look at big picture when we forget what's most important is our local politics and our school boards and our city councils and our board of supervisors and all these little tiny groups that we kind of take for granted. This is where it's getting kind of iffy. And um, now that, I'm awake, I'm driving my school board insane. But that's what parents, unfortunately, we have to do because we didn't pay attention for far too long and we got to this point where they were making bad decisions that are hurting our children. And so now we have to be that mother. I am Beverly Goldberging the fuck out of my school board because that is my responsibility now. And I'm not going to walk away from that. Even when my kids are done, I'm going to stay involved because kids deserve better than what they're doing with these ridiculous – like the school board in San Francisco. Have you been listening to the news about these assholes? Oh, you're talking about the one with the um, – Allison nope. Collins and Madame oh. Presidente and these dipshits in San Francisco. Yes, I uh, actually, um, you know, Eric Ting, the one who I was talking about during the uh, recall thing, he's also been on top of this too. So, yeah, I. <laughs> what a disaster! 
And what's interesting is this is all coming out because, you know, there's all this sudden focus on Asian hate in the country because of the shooting in Georgia. Forget that there were multiple people who were killed of different ethnicities. It is Asian hate. Mm, Fine, whatever. Um, But what they what you find is that Allison Collins, who is the vice president of the school board, I think they call her the commissioner. I don't know. Um, You look back at her timeline five years back and she's referring to Asian students as house N words and saying that they uh, they utilize white supremacy to get ahead and that Asian children are mean to black children. And and it's just she's much nastier because I'm not comfortable saying what she wrote. But these tweets have been up on her timeline for years. And they suddenly come out this week and last week because, you know, there's this big push to end Asian hate. Um, which are trying to blame on Trump, of course, because of the Wuhan virus, the China virus, sure. um, the Hong Kong flu. That was a fun one. Um, so they're trying to make it about Asians. And uh, this woman, her whole timeline is about not liking Asians. And suddenly, you know, she's got like all these cute little Asian letters behind her name. And she's sharing all of these tweets from, you know, people saying, what's in the Asian hate? Um, but yeah. They're trying to get her to resign, and she's refusing to resign. And then El Presidente, who is the president of the school board, is standing you know, in solidarity with her. Um, this is the same group that told the gay man he was not diverse enough to be on a committee because he was white. So, right. big problem in San Francisco. Well, I mean, uh, okay, well, here's the thing. No, I mean, this was just this wasn't just San Francisco. This was when, okay, until last week. Um. Asians were just slightly less repulsive than white males on mm-hmm. the soft just food pyramid of hate. Mm-hmm. Okay, but here's the thing: is they figured out over the last election that um, Latinos don't want to be called Latinx. And it's hurting them. But since they can't actually make a victim out of that group anymore, because every time they try, there is some white Hispanic event that just kind of screws their whole narrative. So they are trying to make the Asians, they're trying to make Asians the new Hispanic in this whole thing. And they're trying to make them feel, the thing is that Asians don't feel victimization. No, I mean, I'm sure they do, but not in the way that progressives want them to, because you have, let's take the Chinese, for example, hundreds of thousands of slaves used to build the transcontinental railroad and do all of the shit menial labor jobs in California up until the Chinese exclusion acts. And then you have the Japanese who were rounded up and put into Manzanar. There is a long history of Democrats treating Asians like shit. Well, and, and the big push Asian now question. not once is, have they ever asked for reparations. No, and what you see also is you see Asians arming themselves. <laughs> They're right. like, we're not going to fuck you, you know. <laughs> we're not going to take this shit. If you want to come at us, you're going to have to come at us, you know. And uh, there's there's a whole different world because they're they're trying to victimize a group of people who don't want to be victimized. Right. And so why, are, why, are, why aren't you feeling oppressed? I don't know. I'm doing pretty well. Because uh, I'm smarter than all of you. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, my husband loves me. He brought me water. Thank you, honey. Math is racist, but Asians are good at math. Asians are racist. Yeah. By the standard of property, (laughs) (laughs) I just... uh, Yeah. See? And it's all because... I I don't know if parents in San Francisco have not been paying attention. My, My guess is they elected these morons because they think that there's some great oppression and they were woke for electing these assholes but for me i wasn't paying enough attention i was far too focused on big picture and i wasn't paying attention to what's in my backyard and until it was on my backyard and screwing up my family so we we can't just pull our kids out of school and go private or pull our kids out of school and go homeschooling because when we do that we just give another piece of power to these people who are destroying these institutions that we're paying for anyway Right, because it's yeah. not like you know. It's like you said, without vouchers, it's not like the money's following the kid. Right. That money's still going to your shitty schools. Yeah, your shitty, non-functional public school system, while you are paying out of pocket. Yes. Yeah, and I mean, if you're going to pay for them anyway, you might as well have a say in what they're going to do. And what's fascinating is watching. Okay, so CDC comes out and they say, "Oops, you know what? Six foot is really not necessary. Three foot's enough." Okay, and then when they say, "Well, where does six foot come from anyway?" They're like, eh, "You know, we just doubled what you know they said originally. We just doubled the three foot thing." There's no yeah. science behind it. They just said six foot sounds good. 
This yeah. I'm not even making this shit up. This is where six foot came from. Now they're saying three foot is perfectly fine within a school. And Randy Weingarten, who is the president of the American Teachers Foundation, which I can't believe I remember that, um, teachers union, big teachers union, she's saying that she doesn't trust that science because it hasn't been proven. But, you know, the six foot wasn't ever proven either, you nasty yeah, I'm cow. Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that she is against plastic straws, too. She's just horrible. These people are horrible. So I didn't mean to go off of my school stuff, but that's always where my brain is. It seems like I have to, you know, what? eventually I'm going to have to like form my own little pack and just take on public education because <laughs> it's all I talk about and it's all I think about. But they really piss me off and it has become personal for me. And when something becomes personal for me, it becomes my focus and it becomes very hard to focus on anything else. Try and hurt my children. I will end you. And so I will end all of them and... See, now I'm off my soapbox. because I feel fine. See, like I'm all happy and kind now. <laughs> well, no, and you know what? Because it is still t- – it's not like, you know, you're deviating from the brand of the show as a hard news site. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> you know your, your, your anti-teachers union school rants fit right in with our hard news. Our hard yeah. news. Yeah, people are like, I can't wait until food comes on and I because I don't know what's going on in the world and they're gonna cover the hard hitting news that I need to know about. <laughs> you know okay. But you know, we're not covering <laughs> Bigfoot porn and all that stuff. So I mean we're, well, we've grown up week. a little bit. Not this week. And it's not the ass or the vagina or the boob show. Well, it was like I last week when I, <laughs> when I was just getting ready to go on with Rick on R and W. Hammy had just wrapped up with uh, Jody. And I got a uh, message on the uh, from the chat saying, I don't hear this anywhere else. You, we only hear this on KLRN. So maybe we are a hard news site. Noise. Yeah, totally. People are like, you know, who knows what's going on in this world is Sam Janney. I can't wait right. to hear her talk about Janie. Janie, yeah, oh, it's so funny. Sam Janie. Yeah. Ah, no, you know, and it was funny as I if people hear my name, they don't know that I'm I'm foo. Like when I went to CPAC last year, like Sam Janie, who the fuck is that? Exactly. I'm like, foo. <laughs> oh, you know, but yeah. yeah, they think I'm a dude. So maybe they think you're Sam. Okay. Right. You could, you could be Sam. <laughs> ah, Is sorry. Brad yeah. Power Roberts. What? <laughs> no, it, all of a sudden, Sa- Sam Janney will just be like the Dread Pirate Roberts where. Oh, it's- my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'll likely kill you in the morning. Have a nice night. <laughs> The original Sam Janney is an oil worker up in North Dakota. He's been living comfortably up there for 17 years. Uh, that's right. Yeah, I inherited it from a, an actual man named Sam. And that's, yeah, that's there we how. Go. Yeah, there <laughs> go. Oh, my God. What is so, wrong? I know what's wrong with you. I don't, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you want that list in alphabetic or chronological order? Oh, let's go in alphabetical. Oh, yeah, okay. But no, I, you know, I. <laughs> I have this whole list, and I went off on my tangent, and now I'm Okay, well, let's hit the list. Well, we have, like, a break in two minutes. If I start my list, it's going to get all confusing. Fine, whatever. So maybe you should just talk about, like, Bigfoot erotica for a couple minutes until we can get to Or, you know, we could do an early break and come back and hit all that rest of the hard news we got going. I have so much hard news. And actually, there is some stuff I I don't really want to talk about, but we need to talk about. Um, Like the Boulder shooting right now, what's taking place still in Boulder, Colorado. Um, is there any information on that? Because there wasn't any when we started the show. You know, it is all over the place. Um, earlier, I was seeing reports of six dead. Uh, one gunman, they believe they had taken into custody. This was the gentleman. I think he was wearing boxer shorts. Um, yeah, and Kirk Eichenwald had a hot take before the first body even hit the ground. Yeah, that they were anti-maskers shooting up King's Yeah. Super. Yeah, um, well, apparently he's anti clothes because he's in boxer shorts and nothing else. So I, I think the mask is probably the smallest. Um, he's anti shoes and so- he's anti pants apparently as well. He's asshole. anti no shoes, no shirt, no service. And then he had blood all over one of his legs. Um, there's a lot of graphic footage out there. If you are squeamish, I suggest you do not look at the Boulder shooting tag on Twitter um, because people are sharing. Uh, things they probably, well, I mean, it's social media, people share everything, but I would, I am avoiding it because I'm not sure there's things I should be looking at. So anyway, when we get back, it is out of the bottom of the hour. We will go over some of this not so fun stuff and the rest of the things on my list that I actually made because I'm organized. Okay, we're going to take a short break and when we come back, we'll get back to it. So stay put. Team No Pants disavows the shooting.
macho America Roll your hands in palaces I love it when you smile I love it when you Sing, 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 sing Holy Joe, hold out your hand Put some dollars down You're wild when it takes you by surprise I'll be there to watch you Run, 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 run Run, run, run Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Hi, I'm Jay Farner, CEO of Quicken Loans, America's largest mortgage lender. Spring will be here soon, so if buying a new home is on your to-do list, right now is the time to call Quicken Loans. Learn about which mortgage options make sense for you and get a jump on your competition. With our exclusive rate shield approval, the low rate you lock today is protected for up to 90 days while you shop for your new home. With a rate shield approval, if rates go up, your low rate stays locked. But if rates go down, you get that new, even lower rate. Either way, you win. Talk to us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com to take advantage. Here's another great reason to work with us. For a record nine years in a row, J.D. Power has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction for primary mortgage origination. Again, to lock in today's low mortgage interest rate and get the security of our exclusive rate shield approval, call us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com. For J.D. Power award information, visit jdpower.com. Rate shield approval only valid on certain 30-year fixed rate loans. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. License in all 50 states. NMLS number 3030. Hi, welcome to this Subway ad for the new Sesame Ginger Glaze Chicken Signature Wrap. How would you like it? I'll take a... Sports announcer at home? Yeah, how do you... We just know. My wife picks up the new signature wrap. It's got double the rotisserie-style chicken mixed with a sesame ginger glaze. She appears annoyed at me, but she shrugs it off. Those sweet and savory flavors are calling her name. She lifts the wrap and... She takes the bite! Incredible! And now she's closing the door on my... Subway, make it what you want. Limited time only at participating restaurants. Double meat based on average six-inch sub. I'm little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle and here is my spout. No, Dad, like this. When I get all steamed up, then I shout, tip me over and pour me out. <laughs> this is WWE superstar Roman Reigns. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. back from break. Thank you for saying book you're here with Fubar at our new time slot on Monday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern. Isn't that exciting? Thank you for saying foot. Are you still there already? Did you fall asleep? I am, and this works out great for me. I like this new time slot. <laughs> it works out better I'm, for me, I'm, too. I, I, I'm very happy that your kids got Taekwondo. I know, right? I know, right? It's funny because, yeah. you know, you, you do radio and you're like, oh, I'm a mom, too, but my mom... My mom is taking precedence over the show, so he had to move it so I could go to Taekwondo with my son. Well, that's fine. It's not very. That's it's not normal. Very, like, I'm, I'm good with normal. It's and not very exciting. Like I should. I'm. I'm wrestling grizzly bears every Monday at seven, and I can't be here. It's so you know. My kid has Taekwondo. You know, it's just very. Um, yeah, it's very normal. This is a good point. Normal's good. Yeah, I'll take in, normal. Kieran and Chad has called it foo savings time. <laughs> I so, like it. So we should make this. I happen. like it too. I think we should make that happen. Yeah. Yes. And as we said, going into break, Team No Pants uh, disavows the shooter. 
Yeah, you know, I went through really quick to see if I could find anything else. I was looking at the Boulder, uh, Boulder Police Department's timeline um, that, that the ongoing threat is gone, that they believe it's over the, the dangers of that. I mean, you know, there's no more gunmen. Um, there is a person of interest, and they are saying there is one injury, and there are multiple deaths, one of which is a Boulder Police uh, Boulder policeman. So um, we don't really know much more than that at this point. But we are watching, and of course, they are talking about the style of weapon. And all over Twitter, it is the AR-15, which they are talking about. Keep in mind, they have not verified anything at this point, and they usually have everything wrong when they are talking this quickly after the shooting. Um, but right now, of course, the, the big push in social media is to ban AR-15. So here we are again. As usual, yep. we'll forget. It, it, it's an AR-15 style weapon, whatever the fuck that means. But in all the reports I've seen, uh, three loud bangs. So that precludes an AR-15, in my opinion. I guess it's relative. Um, yeah. You know, but that sounds more shotgunny to me. I, and I, one of the first things I read was it was a shotgun. But, um, again, we don't know. Uh, and I, I really feel like that we are always lose sight of what's important, that these firearms are not the ones that actually did the crime, that we don't talk about what's happening with the gunman. Um, and then it becomes all about the gun, and we forget to talk about why this keeps happening. It's not that there's a gun available. It's that this person is broken. Um, but, anyway... Not to make light of it, we just don't know enough about to talk about it just yet, but, you know, over the next few days, weeks, we're going to see a lot of pushing on more gun control, which we're seeing anyway, because Biden already talked about how much he wants to take all your guns. Um, so this will only add gasoline to that fire, especially after we just had the Georgia shooting a few days back. So keep Boulder in your prayers, folks. And if we hear anything before the end of the show, we'll update you. But right now, you, we don't know much. All we know is what we can read on, on the timeline. So that's where we are. Yeah. See news. I just did news. It's exciting. Like I know what I'm doing or something. I really we're, a hard, don't. we're a hard news show. No, but I mean, okay. <laughs> One, 24 hour rule. And two, this right. is what I talked about before I was suspended from Twitter, and we've talked about it on here quite a few times is that Biden is not going to make the mistakes Obama made. No. That is, he's not going to wait. He's not going to try and do things through the normal channels. He's going to do things the way Obama did at the end and then call them normal. Oh, sure. Everybody governs by fiat decree. So, yeah, yeah you know, and Joe's had an interesting week anyway um, between the how desperately they're trying to avoid talking about the crisis at the border. That has been one of my more interesting things this week is following how badly the media does not want us talking about the border. <laughs> and, and then when they do, like um, when ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, they all, they all mentioned the crisis at the border, then the left goes, oh, here come the Republican talking points again. Republicans are pouncing. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, but um, no, I mean, talking about how ABC, CBS, and NBC yeah, are the Republicans. I'm like, okay, yeah. Sure, but, if, know, if you're the kind of person who, you know, thinks Aaron Rupar is a moderate. Oh, don't get me started on that guy. Oh, we'll be here all night. But no, it's true. And it's <laughs> interesting. Um, even Sean King himself, Talcum X, um, is talking about on his timeline, which I couldn't see because he blocked me years ago. But I am able to see it in other ways. And he's talking about how he's surprised. Yeah, he's uh, surprised that the same people who have spent the last four years talking about, you know, these terrible cages and concentration camps at the border – when Trump was president, they're suddenly don't want to talk about it anymore, and they suddenly don't have a problem with it anymore, even though we know there are four more children at the border in cages in cellophane sleeping bags um, than there ever was under Trump. And they're putting these kids um, into convention centers and, you know, our hotel kids, rooms. Hotel rooms. That was the big one today, too. Is, uh, But these aren't children. These are just illegal immigrants in general. Uh, Jen, Jen Psaki was doing her her, bre her briefing today, and um, I can't remember Emerald's last name, but anyway, the reporter asked her how they could justify putting illegal immigrants into hotel rooms while a National Guard was sleeping in a garage, and she didn't really have an answer for that. Fantastic <laughs> question. It was a great question. That one. Well, and of course, the other question is, how can you justify putting all of these children and these young people into convention centers on top of each other, but you won't let kids go to school? Yeah, there there are things that are they are doing that if this was a Trump administration doing these things, I mean, this, the country would be on fire. But since it's Biden, oh well, you know, it's okay. 
He'll figure it out. Oh, he's. This is my favorite. He's cleaning up the mess Trump left. That's what's happening. Well, I, I love how they're just <laughs> completely gaslighting that. Um, the things Biden said during the debates um, are coming to pass, and they are just completely denying that those things happen. They're just absolutely gaslighting the fuck out of everybody. Well, you know, there's no crisis at the border, even though there are thousands of people. And then uh, the other thing was, um, basically, they're trying to claim that they're telling them not to come. But then there's also all these headlines of, of where Biden is talking about the, uh, no more deportations for 100 days. Um, there's a video <laughs> on, I think it was ABC. God, I can't remember which one it was. It was a mainstream. And she's interviewing an illegal immigrant. And she's like, well, why did you choose to come now? Would you have come under Trump? And he says, oh, God, no. <laughs> and then she said, well, why did you come now? And he goes, well, because of Biden. Yeah, he told us to come. He said, come on in. So here we are. And so, you know, these are things. And then, of course, they had the Project Veritas had the, the photos of inside these concentration camps. Thank you, AOC. Um, of these kids sleeping. They look like little potatoes. It is the saddest most awful photograph of then they're basically on top of each other and we're also hearing that they are 10 percent of them are testing you know they're testing positive for covid they're on top of one another it is a disaster but nobody they don't want to talk about it and it's not a problem and none of them are going biden has said he's not going to the to the border kamala's not going to the border they won't let the media in. about it when asked i know oh it's so funny i'm not gonna go see this like, oh, no 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 yeah yeah it's like oh this is so funny this is, right. I mean, it was, yeah. Yeah, it was bad. I'm sorry. My, my husband's doing sign language at the door telling me he's going to bed. Um, <laughs> All right, guy. No, so, I'm going up. I love you. <laughs> so, yeah. no, and uh, speaking of Veritas, did you see they got a win today? I did not. What did they do? They got a win in the New York Supreme Court in their defamation lawsuit oh, against that. New York. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I heard about that, but I didn't see what. I, that's awesome. Well, it's about time. Yeah, yeah, because you know the New York Times er- editorialized in the story, and um, you know what they were accusing Veritas of doing in the story. The judge said, "You're actually doing that with your paper. They're not the one who's deceptive, being deceptive. You are." <laughs> so we're gonna let. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, good, good for them. Well, and what's interesting too is now. Um, Earlier today, it was like Q Storm or Q, I don't remember what it was, but basically the HBO has made a documentary on Q. Yeah, Q right? the company storm or whatever, yeah. And I just laughed my ass off because most people know that Q is pretty much just you know a handful of crazy people. And then you know the crazy people bought built into it, but there really is no just underground cult. And they did this whole documentary on this cult <laughs> of crazy people who have to be deprogrammed. And I'm just like, holy shit, what is this? And these, I have never seen anybody on the right really talk about Q. You know who talks I, about Q? I mean, it's the left. Right. I mean, okay, so you got the Alex Jones guy. Okay, sure. They, and they're, they, they're big into QAnon. But yeah, the only people who talk about QAnon openly and like, you know, it, it's the left. It's like they're boogeyman. It's their, is Q in the room with us now? <laughs> Where's Q? Are they under the bed? Are they under but the bed? But these are the same people you know, who will tell Q you. Take Q three times, they'll appear and kill you. These are the same people, though, that will tell you that Antifa does not exist because it's just an idea. But Q. Q is real enough to do a documentary on. Yeah. There you go. Fu-anon. No, Fu and on. Don't start with that. You know, Fu goes into a lot of things, but no Fu and on. <laughs> I'll never hear the end of that one. No Fu and on. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, <laughs> yeah, the one thing about it is okay, so they, in this documentary, they think that they've pretty much figured out who Q is. Oh, sure. And that is, um, uh, <sighs> I'm drawing a blank on his name. The uh, Jim Watkins. Jim Watkins from 8chan. Thank you. Oh. So they think he's Q. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. So. I did not know that. Yeah, because when he left 8chan, all of a sudden the Q post stopped. <laughs> so, it okay, lie. whatever. It, yeah. Who killed JR? Who's QAnon? 
those. Yeah, but I mean, seriously, nobody really t- n- nobody. <laughs> I don't know anybody who honestly took him seriously. You know, it's like Q is the kind of thing Rick and I would talk about on juxtaposition, where it's conspiratainment. I mean, we, you know, we, we yeah. a lot, you know, it's we, we, we'll lay the case out and leave it for you to decide. Q QAnon would be a good topic for juxtaposition. It would be, and because some of the stuff is crazy. And what's funny is this was even things we were seeing back in like 2016 with PizzaGate and the idea that they were having these satanic gatherings. And I mean, you know, there are people who bought into that, and that's fine, teach their own. But you know, most of them, that is insane. You know, that's not real. But um, yeah, they believe it enough that they did a documentary on it. And it was trending this morning, and I don't know why. Uh, Project Veritas and the New York Times thing triggered that, but I, it just, it's like well, things are coming to a head finally. I just wish it had come to a head before the election. Well, you know, Stitch just made a great comment in uh, chat too. He said, Q is great, keep, uh, great for keeping the lefties all wound up. You know, just like any good creepypasta story does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, can, I can see that. And they, they need something. They really, I mean, they're they're kind of losing steam on the january 6th insurrection um because you know they're started taking down the fencing um they, they're they have every time they've said well they're gonna come back you know no one's been back uh what was it march 4th and march 20th all came with no issues so right. now they look stupid they're just running out of conspiracies and people are going to start asking questions about the mess that they're making of this country and they've only been in you know in charge for like 53 days it would require a curious press to start asking those questions. Yeah. And what they're doing is they're going to give Cuomo as their sacrifice, like oh. they did with Al Franken and Katie Hill. Right. And then move along. Hey, we got you. You got your scalp. Move along. Right. <laughs> That's the point, fucking <laughs> fucks. Yeah. No, it's bad. And it, it's going to get even more interesting. Uh, you know, they got their $1,400 checks finally, and um, I have people telling me that that's cut childhood poverty in half, which makes me laugh because that's not how it works, but sure. okay. Um, that's, they read that somewhere. They read that in a talking point that these sure. little $1,400 checks are going to end child poverty and that people are going to be able to pay their bills until January, I'm sorry, July with these things. I'm like, Oop, what? <laughs> no way. I literally had a woman in my feed the other day arguing with me that a fourteen hundred dollar check and a tax credit for children was going to cut child poverty in half. I'm still wondering how. I mean, okay, no, and fuck off. I, I just, I this is how a hot take on Twitter becomes fact, right? Because some blue check shits this stuff out. Their dumbass followers eat it up. Then it starts. I mean, we watched it in every election cycle, too, where, you know, like Brooklyn dad would just fart something out. And then all of a sudden that becomes the fact of the matter. Well, they're paying Brooklyn dad to fart that out. So, well, yeah, right. But before we knew that, you know, so. Yeah, they pay him a lot. Of, well, 60000 a year to write stupid tweets. I mean, there are worse jobs. I mean, but you know what's funny is that they were all over Baked Alaska when it came out that he was basically the same thing. Well, yeah, but you know he was on the <laughs> wrong side. So what are you going to do? Sure. <laughs> right. <sighs> oh, God. I guess it depends on who pays you to. If you're paid by the D Triple C, that's okay. If you're paid by Cernovich, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Because <laughs> that's how shit works. That's uh, thinking that's of how, how shit works. You reminded me of today of basically what they were talking about also with the stimulus plan. Our Democrats are talking about how they're basically hooking Americans in. They were bragging about it because they were talking about once you start giving Americans something from the government, something they think is free, it's hard to take it away from them. They're going to depend on it. They're going to want it. And they were bragging about how Americans are going to want to continue to get checks from the government, which is what and Ben Shapiro pointed it out. I mean, he was perfect. He said they're bragging about it, that they are growing government dependence, and that's what they've wanted all along. 
well, yeah. and while they're getting it. And they were how excited they are. Well, you know, if we can keep giving people these checks and, you know, they're going to need us and we'll be in power. And what's interesting is that I'm reading through these comments and I'm reading back and people are like, yeah, I'll take I'll take Joe's money. I'm like, it's not Joe's money, you dumbass. It's your money. And they're yeah. charging you five times what they're giving you for that money, and you're giving them authority and power for the rest of your life. Yeah, you, you want to give you want me to get it hooked to a government handout? How about you stop taking that money in the first place? I, it's just and I'm all hooked on your brand of government. I mean, seriously. Okay. And then what's really interesting too now they've pushed the tax deadline back to mid May, which I'm happy with that because then I'm you know, fuck them. I'm not filing until I have to. Um, but, you know, it's like we've lost the ability to have any kind of structure or demand in society at this point. And it's the last year people have forgotten what it's like to be responsible, to have commitments to things they have to do. And when they start going back to these things, which I hope I hope they do, I'm not seeing much movement, are you? Um, it's going to be very difficult. It was like my kids going back to school. The first week was kind of like this is really weird. Because, you know, they've been in front of a monitor, and now they're with people, and they don't know how to connect again, and it's awkward, and they have a mask on, and it's hard to talk. And I think the kids had trouble when the adults go back to work. If the adults go back to work, it's going to be even worse. And, you know, it's going to be, well, I, I just can't get things done, and there are all these expectations, and we've had expectations for so long, and then like in a year, we no longer know how to adult. That's what it feels like, and they're taking advantage of that. Well, here's a nice check. Stay home, get fat, be complacent, be afraid. Here's another check, and we're in charge. And I'm going to adjust my tinfoil hat, but this drives me crazy because there was also articles today about how ob obesity is back up and alcoholism is up and suicide, oh, we know, is up. Why? I mean, so all of these terrible side effects of their solution to the virus – I it feels like it has destroyed the common like I don't know the the base of our society and our ability to be adults and to have expectations and be responsible and it's like we can't do that anymore. Well, here's another check. Here's another check. Stay home, wear a mask. Here's a check. I'm on my soapbox. See, I get I get late at night and I get on the soapbox a lot because I'm tired. Well, again, we're a hard news show, so that's hard fine. news show. But no, this drives me crazy. And I was reading this today, and they talked about there are millennials who have gained as much as forty-one pounds in the last year. You now, see, I, 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 I just call it my COVID nineteen pounds. I mean, and I'm already working on getting rid of that. But okay, here's the thing, and this is what a, a lot of people use the lockdown time; those who weren't working in some fashion or another to learn some skills, maybe a language. And then there are the people who binged every fucking thing. I mean, if you didn't take that year, and I don't want to judge you if you didn't, I, I can totally, but seriously, you had a year to avail yourself to learn a marketable skill. Right. Well, and some of us, I'm like, cabinetry. I'm, I'm totally spoiled. <laughs> My job really didn't change. I work from home anyway. So for me, it was like, okay, everybody's home, but I'm still doing what I always do anyway. Which, it was weird because then I didn't want to be at home anymore because I knew I had to be home. It's the weirdest feeling. Right. <laughs> um, but And I'm not trying to shame people who well, maybe you for, the, for the last year, maybe that was their thing, was sitting on the couch and, I, you know, whatever. I'm the, I have a chubby ass and the last person did not to talk about people gaining weight. But these are things, I mean, the thing about obesity is it's worse for COVID. You could die if you're fat. You know what I mean? It's just like, oh my God. And when they've made people, Krispy Kreme giving out donuts to people who get vaccinated. Right. What There's the hell a, is that? I know. <laughs> I, again, that is just um, reinforcing bad decisions is if what that is. want to eat a free donut every day because you just took a shot, you know, that's on you. But this, that seems really, I don't know, kind of backwards to the whole Hey, we want you to be healthy. Get vaccinated, and if you get vaccinated, we're going to make you fat. So, okay, <laughs> so weird. Um, but yeah, that story really bothered me today when I saw that about the, and the millennials really who gained weight like they did between twenty. The average between twenty nine and forty one pounds in the last year that they've put on. Yeah, because we've forgotten I, how to to be adults. We don't they, know how to well, work. I mean, they weren't. Well, 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 Let's remember, we're talking about the Tide Pod eating kids. It's not like they were very good at adulting heading into it. But even you're, you have, 
what really is disappointing is like your Gen Xers are even like, you're right, I, I don't want to go out, I'm scared. I mean, there are people who are still afraid to go outside. I talk about going to dinner, like, what do you mean you go to dinner? I mean, well, we just go have dinner. I mean, it's like we've been doing it for the whole year. There are people who have not left their house. Yeah. I, I just, no, I but... that's what, and that, the idea of we have to get back to normal or we won't get back to normal. And I don't think people understand that at the government level. And I don't think they understand what they've done to people and how badly they've terrified them. Because there are truly people who don't their job one bit. Yeah, they don't ever want to go back to being normal. I mean, there's a woman in one of my groups who's like, "I'm going to wear a mask the rest of my life." And I'm like, "Why? Wow, you have a beautiful face. Don't cover your face. I don't want to get sick." Oh, well, you've spent 40 years of your life not wearing a mask, and you didn't die because of that. You know, it's just the insanity and the idea. Oh my God, did you not know we were mortal? That we can die? I just don't understand. You know what? The last year has been really over. Last year now has just been one of the most just darkest, saddest times in this country. And I'm not saying the Civil War wasn't worse and that Holocaust. I mean, that's all terrible. And 9/11 was awful. But I mean, this this was a self-imposed, self-inflicted wound, and it's going to take us. I don't. I don't know if we can recover. And that's what scares the hell out of me the most. Yes, I agree with that. And that is. Uh... <sighs> Um. Yeah, this this was a pussification without and pacification without needing to fire a shot. Yeah, this was just strictly get into people's heads, and, and they did. Yeah, people are still afraid. I, you know, and it was like you know I. I had to take my mom to the dentist today, and she's looking around. She's going, "Well, they're not wearing a mask. They're not wearing a mask. Don't be a mask hole. <laughs> you don't worry about what other people do. Yeah, you worry about yourself. You do the the best you can do is take care of yourself. Absolutely. If you take worry what other people are doing, then I mean, yeah, yeah. But so, you know, and I get and I get it. She's eighty six. Yeah, you know, she's yeah. not in. You know, I mean, she's in pretty good health for eighty six, but she's in that. Death demographic of this oh, yeah. thing. Oh, and yeah. My father in law is 81, and he's flying out to see us next week. But he wasn't going to do it until he's vaccinated. And that, I mean, I, I respect and understand that. But I mean, we have people who, we have teachers who are vaccinated who refuse to go teach. I mean, it's just, we, we, I don't know if it's, we've gotten too comfortable sitting at home by ourselves, but we, we can't go on like that. And so I'm hoping that like tomorrow and, Ralph Coon Man comes out and he he says, you know what, stays open. But he's not going to do that because he's a fucking Democrat. But anyway, we have like two minutes left. We probably need to wrap up, and I'll get on my right. soapbox. Yeah, before you get on your next soapbox. Oh my Where god! Where can people really? find you, Sam? <laughs> Nowhere anymore. I'm done. No, uh, they can find me uh, every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern here on Fubar with the Samish guy um, on. Twitter at Politibunny, that's P-O-L-I-T-I-B-U-N-N-Y, and a little website called Twitchy.com. And gosh, we'll be here all night already, but where can people find you? <laughs> well, they can find me in about 10 minutes on Cyber Chill with our producer, Lou, where we discuss um, all things tech and tech related and then uh, on wednesday you can find me on robinson and Wright. thursday you can find me on the culture shift with brad slager and then back around monday with my lovely and talented co-host samantha janney oh that is such a weird ugh. it doesn't feel right hearing that out loud <laughs> don't say that <laughs> <sighs> yeah, and, they can find me, and since I'm still banned from Twitter, they can find me on Minds and MeWe, and maybe CloudHub if they get their shit together. Oh yeah, and whatever new thing that Trump co- puts out. I can't wait. That's gonna be awesome. But that's like that's next show. So yeah, fun. two, three, two or three months, guys. Trump's got his own social media platform. Okay. And we yeah. will have unfettered conversations. And we will be over there, and hopefully we can get in trouble in there. Anyway, <laughs> we're about right done tonight. Uh, please stay tuned because. Uh, these two people, these amazing this people, uh, Lou and already here, have a show up next. So stay put. Don't go anywhere. And then next week, we'll be back here at 9 p.m. Eastern. And until then, keep your sense of humor and stay out of jail. Hail Hydra.
nothing but the ghetto. Taking short steps one foot at a time and kept my head low and never let go. Cause if I let go, then I'd be spineless. I'm going insane. I'm 